Uh, we're now going to pivot to a brief update on homelessness. Uh, this is, again, an effort to provide additional feedback and uh, discussion. Last time we were here on August 6th at our last work session, we provided some background on a, a memo that went out uh, that day uh, describing some recent efforts, and another memo uh, from staff went out last Friday, and we just wanted to uh, describe what was in that memo and then answer any questions that you might have. So with that, I'll pass it back to Rodney Gonzalez. Thank you, Spencer. Rodney Gonzalez, Assistant City Manager for Economic Opportunity and Affordability. With me is Christy Samilpa, who has been assisting us with the Homeless Strategy Office. Um, Mayor and Council, I, I don't think I need to tell you this, but homelessness is our most complicated and our most challenging issue confronting us today. Um, we are not alone. Every major city in the U.S. is facing this challenge. Um, we are learning from each other as we address this challenge, and I think that's really important to note that um, this issue is being experienced in other major cities. There are things that are being tried out that either succeed or that fail, and we learn from those successes and those failures. Um, I do, however, think that we are at a moment in time in Austin's history where we can work together collaboratively to solve the issues that are confronting us in a way that are ethical, that we get people housed and off the streets, in a way that we collaborate with each other in a way that we've never collaborated before. And so with that, last Friday I did provide a memo to Council with regard to some of the directives that Council provided us on June 20th, in particular to camping. Uh, and we did research best practices with regard to camping. It is not a recommended strategy or approach for solutions to homelessness. In fact, they, uh, authorized campsites tend to detract the staff resources and time um, from those solutions that do solve homelessness. So we respectfully had uh, informed council that we would not pursue authorized encampments. <laughs> However, as part of the June 20th resolution from council, you did ask us to identify some limitations criteria for camping, sitting, and lying. And we're still researching those limitations criteria. We do intend to provide that to council. So that way, as you deliberate what you would like to do with the ordinances for camping, sitting, and lying, that you have that information from us as well. But that information will come to council in the form of a memo after we've engaged with stakeholders. Mayor, uh, the message board that you posted last night was very well received from us. You identified the various new housing focused efforts that we've undertaken in the last six to nine months. And that's really where we want to put our efforts. Uh, those housing focused shelters, whether it's emergency shelters, whether it's permanent supportive housing, whether it's navigation centers. I think we've made some great strides in that regard. Council in June also approved the South Austin Housing Center. Um, and then, of course, within the fiscal year 1920 proposed budget, there's uh, dollars that are allocated towards the Rathgavers Salvation Army Center as well. And uh, once again, that's where our primary focus is going to lie, in identifying those housing-focused solutions so that way individuals who are experiencing homelessness and are unsheltered can be directed to those housing options. Also in our memo, we spoke to collaboration. Now more than ever, we need to band together as a community to address the challenges in front of us, not just from the nonprofit service providers, not just from businesses, not just from philanthropies, but from other agencies that are in a taxing position like the city of Austin. We need to work with our, par our partners at the county. We need to work with our partners at Central Health. We need to work with everyone who has an opportunity to assist with the challenge in front of us. So with that, as Spencer had mentioned, I want to just provide a brief overview to you and to the viewing public as to the content of the memo that release, was released on Friday, why we provided the recommendation that we did, and that we're not done yet, that there are still many more things to do. Thanks for, for that. Thanks for the, for the two memos. The, um, um, this is obviously a huge issue that collectively as a council we've identified as the highest priority, not something that lends itself, I think, best to any small group of council members going off and working on their own. Uh, I think we're all really invested in this, uh, which is why as soon as uh, uh, Anne and, and Kathy and I and, and, and Greg was um, uh, in, involved in it, had something, we posted it on the message board, hoping to have a, a kind of a collective effort that we're, that we're all doing together. But my sense in the community is that uh, people are going to want us to, to consider doing something in, in September. 
uh, that uh, speaks to some of the issues that uh, we might be able to address, and, and, and I, for one, am going to be taking a look at these issues. I'm really excited that uh, uh, Lori is coming on board. I'm not sure we've ever had a hire in the city that is going to need to, to enter already running uh, at, at high speeds uh, the way that uh, uh, she's going to have to uh, coming coming in, and I hope you're sending her packets <laughs> so that when she, when she arrives she knows what, what, uh, what she's walking into. But uh, I, am, I am really proud that uh, our city, uh, <clears throat> perhaps earlier in the cycle than most cities, is recognizing that uh, we don't fix homelessness by just moving people around the city. Uh, in fact, the cities that have tried to sustain an effort doing that are the ones that are in the deepest trouble right now. Uh, and I know that, it, that it's hard to, to, to sometimes deal with big issues like this, uh, uh, perhaps earlier than it, than it rises to the level of a Seattle or a Los Angeles, which we want to try to avoid. But I'm proud to be part of a city that recognizes that just moving people around doesn't help. When we go to someone and say, you can't be there, you have to move, and we can't answer their question, where do I move to? I'm happy to comply. She's gathering her stuff up. And as she's gathering her stuff up, she looks and she says, where do you want me to go? If we can't answer that question, then she just ends up going someplace else that she's not supposed to be. Uh, and we can move her again, I guess, and, and that's what we do. And we spend millions of taxpayer dollars doing that. Uh, we would be so much better off actually putting her in, in, a, in a home, in a better, safer place to be. Uh, it increases geometrically the, the chances that she'll stabilize her life and reintegrate back into uh, the, the, the flow of the, of the community. I am really excited that there are so many people in the community that are coming forward right now to say, I want to be part of the solution. So many people that are bringing resources to the table, because this is clearly bigger than we can do with the city. But we have such wonderful partners in the city already working uh, on these areas. Uh, unlike many challenges that we have uh, as a city, we know what works. Uh, you know, by getting to, to zero, uh, uh, effective zero for veterans and taking half the homeless children off our streets uh, last year. Uh, Caritas has a 98% success rate of keeping people. We know what works if we're willing as a community to, to step up and get this done. Uh, there's going to be a town hall meeting that the DAA is doing uh, tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. And the uh, posting that you referenced, uh, I think, is being sent out to everyone who's attending that. It's on the message board. I see it now appearing up in social media and urge people to take a look at it. But I think as a community, we have to make an agreement with one another, uh, kind of a social compact. Uh, we live in a city where we're concerned both about people and places. Uh, and the social compact is really simple. Um, if we house the folks that are experiencing homelessness in our community, then we don't have camping in our community. Uh, and whether you're concerned about people or you're concerned about places, the answer is, is exactly the same. We have to find the appropriate homes and services for our neighbors that are experiencing homelessness. So. I appreciate the work. I would like it to go further than the memos that we've seen. Uh, we're going to really need concentrated help, I think, to do something constructive in September, because I think the community is expecting us to, to advance this ball and to really establish a path moving uh, forward. Uh, and then finally, again, I, I thank uh, Ann and Kathy and, and Greg for uh, a lot of work. Uh, I thank the, the, the community partners that have participated in this process and informing it. There's so much work left to be done, and, and this is something that all 11 of us are going to have to be, I think, involved in and engaged in. Pio. I guess, it, and I agree with you, Mayor. And, uh, <coughs> we're we're at a very critical stage, but there is something that really just concerned me. I was watching the news the other day, and uh, there was a scene there on the beach where a wind came by and these um, 
fellas were flying by, and earlier I had seen a canopy underneath one of those bridges there, and I'm going, what happened because of the weather's going to change? We're going to have some tropical storms coming through here. And if these tents are not secured, or these canopies are not secure, they'll just fly right into the expressway. And I, I'm just really concerned that we might have some liability there. So I would like to address that issue because, you know, that's really concerning to me about when I've noticed that these tents have no way to be secured underneath these expressways, especially underneath these bridges. And, and I, I'm just very concerned that you know, we might have some liability if some of these canopies or tents fly into the expressway or on the roadway and create an accident. So I really want to be, uh, want y'all to, to address that issue because I don't want to be liable for any kind of accident where someone gets injured or even, you know, might be even a death there on an accident. So I wish that the city really take a good look at this because, you know, I do believe that we might have some liability there, especially with the weather coming and changing here pretty soon. We might have some tropical storms coming through here. So I want to make sure that we address that issue. That's a good issue. Uh, Ann. Um, thank you. Um, I, I just have a couple of comments and a question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate this. I really do appreciate the staff's memo and the work that you all are, are doing. Um, and I am looking forward to having our homeless strategy officer to, to help you all with the work that you're doing. Um, and I appreciate and agree that camping is not a best, best practice. <coughs> so I have two questions about that. Um, we have to do something in the meantime. And so I am hoping to, to, to continue to work with staff. There's some, some ideas that have been brought forth in the document that, um, that we posted for everyone to think about, mm -hmm. weigh in on, add to, et cetera. Um, but we have to acknowledge there is a meantime. If it's just tomorrow or the next day or next week or the next two weeks. And so I'm looking forward to working with staff to help us figure out what we do about that uh, while, ho while focusing on um, housing. So there's that. And so then the, the question that I had was the, um, you had mentioned, and I think the memo mentions also, uh, continuing to work on the concept of where, where is it appropriate to establish limitations and that you all, uh, I want to understand better your timeline on that. I want to echo what the mayor said in terms of I think the public expects us to take action in September, and I am uh, hoping that that the the work that you all are doing is going to dovetail with the with that timeline in terms of the conversations that we need to have. So I'm I really would would be interested in the staff's thinking. I want to understand the research that you're doing and what you're seeing with regard to that, and I also under, I want to understand the conversations that you're having with the public and, um, and so that you can bring that information back to us. So what is your timeline for coming back to us with, I think I, think I heard you say that, you'd, that you guys would be coming back to us with some suggestions on criteria if I heard that correctly. So when is that gonna happen? Absolutely, and so going back to the June 20th council action, council had asked us to come back in August. Mm -hmm. And so it's our intention to meet that council time frame. So it may be closer to August, but we're working with folks to develop that limitations criteria. But just to be clear with everyone, that's going to be in memo form. That's not going to be an ordinance form from staff. Oh, we're sure, gonna, I understand that. We're going to give you that information. Um, some of that information also may not relate just to camping, but also to parking. Okay. Because as we've seen in other communities, parking can be a concern as well. Um, we just recently, of course, found that the uh, city of Los Angeles has put some restrictions with regard to parking. And I think okay. that that has to also be discussed as well because uh, camping in the form that most people think of is with a tent itself, but you can actually have individuals who are living in their vehicle as well. And those can be unsafe environments for them as well. And so we want to make sure that we're as broad as possible in presenting that criteria to council and that we've engaged with the community um, in those in those areas of where is it unsafe for individuals to be at 
Okay. Uh, so that way you can take that information into consideration as you uh, decide what to do next. Okay. Uh, thank you. And did I hear end of August? Is that what I heard as the timeline? It's our desire to meet that goal for council the end of August. Okay. Um, and so what we want to do is provide as much information as possible um, at that time. Um, again, it's criteria. I think it's going to lead to the next piece, which is a conversation with that criteria, mm -hmm. um, which also, of course, will lead to a conversation of enforcement. You know, what does council have in mind with regard to enforcement? I think the mayor's post um, from last night touched on that area. Uh, it's one thing to have criteria, and then, of course, when you make that into the form of an ordinance, what you are contemplating in terms of enforcement. I think, uh, thank you. Um, I think the document that the, that the three of us posted yes. was um, our thinking, and, and I appreciate Councilmember Kassar's participation, is just a, is a beginning level thinking. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm hoping that is something that we start the conversation um, around from our colleagues and also from the uh, community. So, but I'm really looking forward to the memo at the end of August from the staff. And so the last point I wanted to make, or, or last piece of information I wanted to share uh, that I think is out there, but I want to make sure that people understand is uh, we've, so far anyway, there are three forums that are being planned, and I know that my colleagues are, are talking with people uh, in their districts, um, as I am, and, and, the, and the mayor's talking to folks too. So, uh, but I do want to highlight these three forums uh, for people to uh, know that they have the opportunity to come and uh, participate. Um, the first one, as the mayor said, is tomorrow, which is the uh, is the meetings scheduled um, by the DAA at 10 a.m. There is also one uh, scheduled for the 29th, being hosted by the LBJ School and the LBJ School Library, if I got that right, on the 29th, and that one's in the evening. And then there's one in South Austin on September 3rd that's being hosted by St. Edwards University. My understanding that these additional two will also follow the same format in terms of people uh, having a website they can go to and, um, and register that they want to come. Um, I don't know if those are out yet in terms of where people can register, but as soon as we find that, we'll send it out, and I know others will too. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Greg. No, I, I, um, I appreciate the memo update that came from the June set of actions. I appreciate the uh, message board post and uh, and appreciate you, Mayor, and uh, Council Members Tovo and Kitchen for, for letting me have a really substantial input as as you put that together. I think it reflects our, our shared focus on addressing the root issues of, of the challenge and of the problem. Um, I really appreciated how it laid out all of the work that has been done and the work that is to be done. I appreciated that it also focused on, you know, if folks have issues with litter, then we should have trash cans. If folks have issues with sanitation, we should have bathrooms. If folks have issues with camping, then the root, uh, the, the real solution to that is is housing and uh, and services. And so I think we really share those goals. I also supported 184 in June uh, because I was interested and remain interested in what carefully tailored non-discriminatory restrictions. Um, might look like beyond the current restrictions that uh, that exist, and th I just think that as we work on that, we have to be really careful to make sure that we don't recriminalize the mere status of, of homelessness. And I don't think that that's actually anybody's intent. Knowing y'all and having spoken to you and having consulted with you on the document, I don't think that's anyone's intent. But we should just be really careful as we uh, carefully tailor anything that uh, that we change. Um, and I also generally agree with the, with the uh, philosophy in the document that the best way to deter camping is to make sure that people have a good place to go. I think my only difference, if there is a difference, is that I think we should provide housing and services not with an aim towards prohibiting camping, camping but actually provide that housing and services with an aim towards preventing it by making camping obsolete and entirely unnecessary because... Homelessness is already so hard and traumatic that if we provide good options, then camping would not, would not exist. It would be prevented, um, and, then if, and then hopefully we can also continue to do the work you all laid out in preventing people from uh, entering homelessness in the first place. And so I think that, that generally um, 
I think on this council there is this shared path and shared desire towards, uh, towards addressing the root causes of homelessness and ending uh, homelessness in Austin while making sure our rules um, are not discriminatory um, and are not counterproductive. And I think that that's just the shared work that we have to continue doing. Uh, Leslie and then, what about Kathy and then Leslie? Leslie and then Kathy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I got a, a constituent inquiry about homeless camp cleanups, and, um, and I know that staff has been working hard to assemble all of the various efforts cross-departmental into a complete list. So could you just talk a little bit about homelessness camp cleanups, um, what kind of schedule we have, where the camps are that are being cleaned, and, and uh, if you have that information assembled, where can the community find it if it's available um, on the web? Great. I'm going to have to defer to Christy on this piece. Council Member, thank you for the question. Uh, Christy Similbo with the Homeless Strategy Office. Yes, staff is working very hard. As you are aware, uh, Public Works has a contract now to assume the uh, underpass cleanups that TxDOT uh, prior, maintained prior. Um, but we are also working with um, staff uh, in Austin Resource Recovery, Public Works, PARD, uh, as you may know. And we have uh, implemented a violet bag pilot program, which is uh, working with uh, encampments underneath uh, four underpasses right now. Um, it's nearing the end of the um, pilot phase, and so we are looking at the success, measuring that, exploring opportunities if we can expand. Um, so we have a list of, of the prioritized sites, uh, and right now we're just working with our partner departments to see how we can roll that forward. And, and in the upcoming memos, we will be including that information for you. There was a particular um, concern um, the underpass of 183 at Olin, if you could get me um, a report on, on how that cleanup may or may not have occurred, and if it didn't, when did we come back, and are we maintaining a healthy environment? That's one thing I want to make sure our community knows, is we're, we've worked to decriminalize the, the certain behaviors. Um, but we have not suspended our concern with um, the health and safety of everybody in our community. Um, and so to that end, the cleanups. Absolutely. We'll get that back. Thanks. Thanks very much um, for the memo. And, and thanks to my colleagues um, who have already been acknowledged, Mayor Adler, Councilmember Kitchen, and Councilmember Kassar for the conversations that we've had in producing and producing some of the ideas that went into the memo. I had a couple of questions. One, I just want to signal that I, I, I'm very glad um, that you reached out and had conversations with the National Alliance to End Homelessness. They had offered some cautions to us when we talked about having sanctioned camping areas, but I still think we should explore that option a, a little bit further and see if um, there are ways to learn from some other cities. You know, I think as everyone here today has said, camping is a terrible option for individuals, and we don't want to have anybody camping on our streets. But to the extent that they are having, having that happening in areas that are well lit with access to restrooms and water would seem to me um, a better option than, than some of the options we're seeing. And so I, look, I hope that we can have that conversation about what additional information you have and whether there were any examples anywhere that were, that were um, worth thinking about. And then I, I wanted to talk a little bit about so, some of what's already been covered, but I guess I'm, last, last meeting we passed, the rest, we passed the Red River Ordinance to move forward with installing trash receptacles, and I just, I want to get a sense, I can't explain to people why we've not been able to do that at our underpasses, along Red River. Um, and in other areas where we need them. And so I, I really very much appreciate the purple bag pilot, but it, but it's, you know, we have so many more sites that really need trash pickup. Um, I know when Council Member Houston was on the council, she went and talked to individuals who were under our overpasses on I-35. They asked for trash receptacles. So, you know, it just seems like something we ought to be able to do. And I know we had to ask at, at some point 
our relationship with TxDOT was that we needed to ask for permission for those receptacles, and I guess it wasn't granted. Or um, I think some of the some of the challenges is, challenges have been who would maintain them, but we. It just needs to be the highest priority in my mind, or a high priority, not obviously the highest, but a high priority to figure out how to, al how to allow people to keep their areas clean. And so have we made, are we, are we able, now that we've taken on the cleanups or the response, now that TxDOT has assigned us the responsibility of um, providing sanitation for under the overpasses, do we have permission to put trash receptacles there? Um, if you don't mind, we'll follow up with that question with Public Works. It's the first that I've heard of it. I, I, I know there's a lot of history with regard to this. And so let us follow up with Public Works great. and Thank ask you. that question about trash receptacles and see what options were explored and, and why they right. weren't implemented. We've asked the question probably every couple months, but I, I'll okay. be I appreciate, I never directed it to you all, and so thank you very much for following up on that. And, you know, again, I hope that we can figure out um, among our departments, I think the part of the challenge on Red River was who was going to bear responsibility for um, servicing those trash receptacles. Again, I think as a city, we just should be able to figure that out and, um, and make it happen. And with regard to your question about examples of campsites, I believe the HUD report, which was cited in the memo, there should be a hyperlink to that. They did um, do some some research analysis on campsites, and so I think you'll find Great. some examples there. Thank you. I will. I will definitely track those down. I appreciate it. Um, can you give us an update if you have one, or could you get back to us? I know that um, in a lot of these conversations, we're talking about the need for restrooms, and quite a while ago, we sort of started on that path. Um, and I know a lot of you are really tired of me talking about it, but I, as I understand, they've been ordered. Do you have any update on when they might come? Again, I'd have to pose that question to Public Works and see when the implementation is scheduled for that. Great, and I want to just point out that you know these are these are really of need for anyone in our downtown. Um, having spent a long evening into the wee hours of the morning um, out on Sixth Street with some of our officers a few weekends ago, I was pretty surprised when I went into a couple of establishments that they actually had signs up that on Saturday um, from nine o'clock on they're public restroom, their restrooms were not available even to customers. And so, you know, you can imagine. So when I saw people using the alleys and the streets, you know why? I mean, when you are in some of our eating establishments on 6th Street and you can't use the restroom that's there provided for customers, we have a challenge. So that's, that's sort of a bigger issue we need to deal with, but we also need to provide facilities for people to Absolutely. To use them. And Richard Mendoza, Public Works Director, uh, is joining us today. He and he may be able to answer some of those earlier questions. Oh, super. Thanks. Morning, Council Members. Yes, um, the latest update on the permanent public restrooms is we have uh, three of them currently on order. We are moving forward with the Portland Loo construction and design that is used in many communities, one just south of here in San Antonio. Uh, the first two locations, we expect delivery in November. Uh, we are obtaining construction permits to extend the utilities, namely water and sewer service, to the first of those three locations. And then the third unit is in the uh, construction or fabrication queue for delivery at the first of the year. Great. So two will be landing in November? We expect One delivery in November. That's our January. estimated delivery date. But we will actually be preparing the utility uh, services prior to that, so that Great. the utility is available when they arrive. Super. Um, do you have an up Did you have an update on our negotiations with TxDOT or our relationship with TxDOT and whether that now allows trash receptacles? So, in order for us to put permanent structures within the right of way, we have to enter into a um, maintenance agreement with them. I will have to follow up with my staff on the update of those conversations. I do know uh, Public Works was in conversations with our uh, sister department, Austin Resource Recovery on how we can uh, make sure we have the capacity to service those containers on a uh, frequent basis. But I will get, follow up with the staff on that report. And since we had to enter into TxDOT with, I mean, we entered into some agreement. I think that was the agreement that we had some challenging conversations about here about because they were <coughs> requiring us to take that on. I would assume that that, I mean, we had, I would, I would assume that if we're allowed to maintain them, that we are now. Yes, um, you, would, you would think so. The locations that we assume the underpass cleanups 
uh, from TxDOT were actually where our city streets uh, intersect underneath their right of way. So, you know, their, their um, I guess, argument was that we were always responsible for that, but they uh, have been conducting those cleanups for the past few years. Um, a lot of these other locations are outside of where the city streets intersect with the overpasses throughout the city. Those remain the responsibility of the Texas DOT. Okay. Um, and I think in at least a couple of cases, there is a fund that we have that is for the express purpose of improvements to that parking garage. So if, you know, if there needs to be some kind of reimbursement to ARR or whatnot, I think, I think that there's even potentially funding available in that. Yes, in that and fund. we are partnering with our Aston Transportation Department on the potential use of those funds for those improvements. Okay, great. Um, good, thank you. Well, I think that's all I want to say for now. I think we're going to be talking, having lots of opportunities in the next couple of days, including tomorrow. Um, but I, you know, I appreciate I appreciate that we are having kind of a broader conversation about about um, how to end homelessness in this community, and that I think we have lots of lots of people engaged in the conversation about how to raise resources, and I think that's just critically important. So thank you for your continued focus on on that on that issue, on how we you know make sure that we're reaching out across the community and, and making everybody aware of their responsibility to participate. Allison, then Paige. Thank you. I appreciate the information um, in the memo. Some of it would have been really helpful for us to have back in June, and I'm sorry that we didn't have it then. Um, I was wondering, you know, in this, you talked a lot about sort of the um, the advice not to do camping places. Um, can you talk about which cities you're looking to that have good practices broadly for homelessness, but also... Um, in this middle space that we are? Um, so the cities that were identified in HUD, I can't remember them off, off memory, but from HUD's perspective, they didn't effectively contribute to ending homelessness or to solving homelessness. So it wasn't that they couldn't develop an effective campsite program. It was more that they detracted staff time and resources from those solutions that do effectively end homelessness, which are housing. Um, as we talk about housing-focused solutions, those are quite expensive. You've got the capital costs, you've got the operating costs, you've got the staff time to devote to putting those up. And when you, when you transfer dollars to other areas, such as camping, and when you transfer staff resources to those areas, that means that those are less dollars and less staff time that you can spend on those housing-focused solutions. Um, campsites by themselves require a lot of maintenance to stand up. They're not the traditional campsites that we're used to thinking of where people are in a campsite, there's order, et cetera. Um, typically there's a manager on site, typically there's some sort of rules in place, typically there's the things that were mentioned here earlier, which are the bathrooms, the shower facilities, the ability for people to take care of themselves while they're there. And there's a lot of time and effort and cost associated with getting those campsites in that orderly process. And so it wasn't that we couldn't do the very best at effectively standing up a campsite. It's more where do you want to put your time and resources towards? Do you want to put them towards housing-focused solutions, or do you want us to focus on campsites themselves? Thank you. Um, I appreciate that answer. Um, that's really useful information. Um, wasn't exactly what I was trying to get at. I'm trying to understand who, and I may have a follow on from what you just said. Sure. It made me think of something else. But um, I'm trying to understand which cities are, are um, helping people experiencing homelessness in, in a way that we might look to them as a model, and, and which are these cities. Well, uh, thank you. And, um, this may sound like a shocker to some people, but Austin is actually looked at as a model towards solutions for ending homelessness. And I don't just say that. Our nonprofit service providers can tell you that as well. They are at the stage at these conferences for the National Alliance for Ending Homelessness. Susan McDowell recently was one of the featured um, presenters there um, last month. And so the things that we are doing in Austin 
are actually viewed as a model, for example, community first, um, the area that is uh, permanent supportive housing for our most chronically homeless. Um, has been featured in People Magazine, has been featured in CNN. There are things that we are doing in Austin that are recommended best practices. Council recently adopted the Pay for Success program, which is a model for permanent supportive housing in a way that decreases the, the cost that we typically incur with emergent care uh, services. Um, now, we recognize that, of course, we don't have all, this, all the solutions. Um, and so what we find typically is that there are some other cities out there that have a program that works really well. Um, and we will, I've said this before, we're not afraid to borrow or to steal those ideas from those other communities. We will take every single idea that is out there um, that is housing focused to see if it works. Um, so in that regard, working with the United States Interagency Council to End Homelessness, the National uh, Alliance to End Homelessness, um, the Housing and Urban Development Program, they help us identify what those best practices are. I don't think that they themselves are gonna say, here's a city that has, without a doubt, solved it and maintained it, but what they will do is they will, they will identify programs and projects that have worked in other cities that can perhaps be replicated in Austin as well. Thank you. I think that's a really um, important perspective for us to keep in mind that we are a model in certain areas and we're doing a lot right. Um, my hope is that however we figure out to muddle through the situation that we're in now, um, we also um, can provide a model to the rest of the country about how to um, help people experiencing homelessness and preserve public order at the same time. I don't have the answer to that, but I I think that's where we're all kind of going. Um, what, what I'm, what I, where we find ourselves, though, is that we're in this in-between place, and um, I think we're we're trying to find ways to move in the short term. We have plans in place to provide a lot of the housing first solutions, but that takes a lot of time and it takes money. Um, and we now have to deal with the situation on our hands and we can debate how we got to that situation, but the fact is we have a problem on our hands that we as a community have decided we need to address. Um, so how is this office um, going to be helping us to navigate where we are now? I completely agree that we'd rather not spend it on camping and put it in, into housing, but, but I think we're at a place where we may have to figure something in between out. Absolutely. Well, I think the message board post that was presented by Council Members Kitchen and Kazar and the mayor is a good entry point for that, for collaborating with staff um, and other council members as well, um, for collaborating on that, to working toward together to address those issues that are daylighted today. Um, I, inherently, I don't believe that we have an increased number of people experiencing homelessness between June and today. It is there, it is visible, it is being discussed, the media is writing about it, uh, presenting pictures and videos about it, but inherently I don't think that the number has exponentially increased since June. What it did do is it identified that it is an issue in the community, an issue that belongs to all of us to resolve. And so in that regard, I say it's not just city staff working with council, it's businesses, it's philanthropists, it's other agencies that you interact with as well that operate in this space. We do have a role in that as city staff. We work with you, we work with the community, and we will always do that. I think that message board post that was posted last night gives us a good opportunity to outline how we can work together. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, and um, thank you to my colleagues for posting that. I look forward to reading it in more detail. Um, there is one element there that I think we do have to consider, um, and, and I wanted to ask staff about that with respect to the restrictions is um, some of the issues of the right-of-way um, where they lack some clarity. So we've received questions from constituents about code requirements that um, – they have to keep their properties clear of tall grass and debris and large objects up to the curb. And we are getting a lot of questions about what the protocol is if someone is camped in the right of way in their residential area. Um, and I haven't been able to get a clear answer 
on what to advise folks. Not that this is happening, I just want to be very clear, but it is one of those questions that um, is coming up that people need an answer to as they try to, to think through the challenges that we face. Absolutely, and typically that question in, involves some sort of assumption that there could be an enforcement of rules, if you will. Um, and so we will look um, into that area with our um, public safety partners to, and uh, health officials to identify what, if any, rules would apply in those situations. I know that we've engaged with people who have said, you know, there's furniture also in these rights of way. Is that allowable, et cetera? Um, it's something that we need to come forward with with regard to are there rules in place and what is the enforcement for those rules. And we do have to be very careful in light of council's policy direction from June or ordinance changes from June um, so as not to criminalize individuals, um, which makes their situation worse. Uh, but we, de we do definitely need to provide you that information with regard to what rules are in place, um, if any, that would prevent those things from happening. I think there's two parts of it is what are the rules that govern the right of way for potential camping, but then also what are the responsibilities in light of that for the property owners who are supposed to take care of their, their right of way. Um, it's just one of those unintended consequences potentially of this that folks are trying to, to understand. And again, I want to be clear, we don't have actual instances of this, but we have a lot of people asking about it. So, thank you. Okay, Paige. I want to thank you for beginning to roll out this information. Um, I think a lot of us kind of want more answers sooner, um, mm -hmm. obviously, so that pressure is definitely falling on you. Um, I'm glad to see that our goal continues to be minimizing homelessness, um, not just trying to not see it anymore. Um, it's something our community is really compassionate about, and I think we're all kind of eager to be able to find the exact answers we're going to land on and to be able to implement those programs. Um, I have kind of just a comment and request about um, general communication because I know we're going to be looking at some of the rules that we're enforcing throughout the next few weeks and it might be helpful um, to either keep us in the loop on what's being communicated to different departments. So if uh, constituents are calling and asking, you know, um, are people being trained on what the new rules are or when is that training happening so we know when, you know, an appropriate effective date could be. And also, um, kind of a request for um, our public information office or graphic developers to be able to kind of give us a material that we can easily share with constituents to explain what's changing and when it's changing. So I think that there's a lot of um, the game of telephone happening where one person says this is happening, another person says it's different, and I just want to make sure that everyone's really understanding the work that we're doing and the things that y'all are suggesting that we're going to implement um, so that when they do go into effect there it could be more easily interpreted than trying to read the ordinance itself. Um, I know council members and our staff are really well versed in it but the general public um, needs something a little easier for them to understand what's changing and why. Thank you. So that's for just a general request. Thank you for that and uh, immediately after the ordinances were amended in June we did post a Q&A on our website mm -hmm. which I think was well was received helpful. and very helpful. And so we can build on that in a way that helps, uh, helps council convey to your constituents and to our residents uh, what has changed and what is currently in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know there's a few things where maybe it overlaps with a, um, like a state law or something to that effect mm -hmm. where it's not mentioned in our code, but kind of a rundown of what is still illegal, was illegal in early June, and is still illegal behavior um, and expectations from our community in general. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes, yeah. Do you have anything else? Uh, just a quick follow up um, on the communication. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Ellis, for bringing that up. It made me think about, and I think this may be on y'all's, um, you know, maybe something you're already planning on doing, but um, I think it would be good to have one location that was easy, easy to find for the public that has the various fact sheets and QA in one place. And tell me if I've missed that so that I can, you know, I, or if it's something in the works. Uh, because I'm thinking uh, the a fact sheet on the ordinance, like uh, Council Member Ellis was asking about, um, there's a various other um, fact sheets that are out there. I, what I haven't seen is a specific fact sheet on that includes all of the uh, initiatives 
that the, uh, the city has undertaken, whether alone or in partnership. We've got various documents that have pieces of that, but I haven't seen a comprehensive list, and that would be helpful for people too. So if I'm missing it, just let me know where to look. Um, I also think that centralized, um, you know, web page or would be useful for people uh, if they had a place to go that they could look at all this information together. If they had a place to go where they could actually submit inquiries, um, get some feedback. It's not unlike what we do for the budget right now or what we're doing for the land development code. Now, I understand that there's some, um, some work that, that has to be done to actually get to that, that level of interaction. But um, at a minimum, I'd love to see the kinds of fact sheets that Council Member Ellis pointed to. And I'm hoping that we can get to a point where, where we have the kind of uh, interactive page like we do for the Land Development Code and we have for the budget. It just helps people see what we're all... all um, doing and talking about so and and I would concur with you that that is helpful it's also helpful for staff yeah to have all that, all that information consolidated and so I, I do believe that in the very near future that you're going to see an effort um, uh, in that direction um, I too am uh, welcoming the day when Lori starts as well Lori has been <laughs> actively uh, following all the news in Austin and has been engaged in various conversations and she is eager to get started and has a lot of thoughts and ideas um, and strategies mm -hmm. with regard to um, getting Austin on the path to success, which I believe we're currently on. Um, and I hear the concern for let's get that path moving faster. And so Lori's aware of that as well. And it is taking a collective effort um, of staff to address this. And sure. so when, when you hear us talk about the concerns for encampment, he hears talk about the concerns for distracting right. mm -hmm. our resources right. and our time and that we want to stay focused on housing focused solutions and we want to work with you mm -hmm. as a council to develop those solutions and to bring them forward as expeditiously as possible and the way that we do that is we work all together towards a common goal and council member i'll just note for sure. for council and for the public that right now that landing page is austintexas.gov backslash homelessness and okay. that is where the FAQs are uh, some documentation but we need to update it with more recent information including the memo that just came out and so that will be where we will build out in the future but just wanted okay. to mention that right now thank you that's very helpful I'll direct people in that direction yes so I have one last very quick comment and that's just um, and again this is uh, work that's on the horizon, so don't expect it immediately. <laughs> but um, we've, we've talked a lot about um, housing and focus on housing. Um, and so I think that um, as the uh, implementation plan is put together, that was one of the items in 184, I forget what we called it, an action plan, a specific implementation plan. One of the things that I think will be helpful for people is to actually understand the scope of the issue as it relates to the additional level of housing that we need. Uh, there are numbers out there right now, uh, and very good information, and thank you all for putting that together in terms of what our exi existing inventory of permanent supportive housing and, and, and that sort of thing is. And we have rough numbers in terms of what the need is. But um, I'm looking forward to uh, the point at which we actually pull all that, that together and have some understanding of what exactly we need to work towards. So, thank you. Okay, I think we're Natasha. Natasha. Oh, yes. Um, so, I was patient long enough to <laughs> <laughs> to be able to add to my original commentary. And mostly, I don't have a question for staff. Mostly, I'd like to echo what uh, my colleague Kassar said about prevention prevention of homelessness by way of underemployment, by way of displacement, by way of a lack of affordability in the city of Austin. Um, also, health issues. You know, a lot of folks are just one health issue away from facing homelessness. And so I think it's a, it's a bigger, broader conversation, uh, including the prevention component. I'd also like to address and follow my, uh, my colleague, alter in what she brought up, which I think is a really good point about modeling. Um, and But for me, I'm talking about modeling behavior. So I'm talking about leading by example. Um, so I encourage my colleagues to all be patient with one another and maintain uh, 
a certain degree of uh, respect and um, let's be candid and let's be thorough about the conversation, but let's be respectful with one another. Because um, I'm also going to ask, I'm not, I'm not asking, I'm going to implore the general community to be more careful about the information that you share and spread. Um, the information that you share when it's based on opinion oftentimes is misinformation and it doesn't help this process. Um, I, I ask that you take the opportunity to offer your experiences, to offer your ideas, to be anecdotal, because it's helpful. Um, but the ideas should be aimed at solutions. Um, even if it's critical, you could be critical of the council, but it should be solution-based. It should be something that's actually substantive. Um, I'd like to ask that people resist the urge to spread opinion-based misinformation. Um, I've seen some things on social media that didn't just disappoint me because of what they said. It disappointed me because I think we can all do a better job of uh, addressing the fact that we have a singular goal. Our singular goal is success, and we don't do that by tearing down what other folks are trying to do to build solutions. Um, I'd also like to say when we... When we're up here, you know, I want you to recognize that all the people up here, um, that this is who you see right now, but council only constitutes a part of the people creating the solutions. Our staff, a massive staff of people are also a part of creating these solutions. It's a collective uh, effort and we're focused on creating tools and solutions for this very, very complex and nuanced issue. And so just wanted to make sure to to do what I normally do and remind us to be civil where possible. Um, it's the only thing that gets us to uh, the end goal. And then you brought up something about furniture. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. Generally speaking, people experiencing homelessness are also um, not people who have pickup trucks that can bring couches and barca loungers to underpasses. These are general citizens that are bringing furniture to these people. Um, so I won't speculate about what your intention is. It's either that you're attempting to be a, a mindful, benevolent citizen, or you just needed to get rid of that couch. All that to say, what we need to not do, <laughs> what we need to encourage people to do, is not exacerbate an issue that we already are trying to figure out solutions for. Don't take giant bags of donations to underpasses. Don't take furniture to underpasses. Take your donations through organizations that are actually the ones that will deliver the things that people need. Um, and I think uh, that FAQ page, that might be a good place to put resources to take donations, because I think we can also help to alleviate some of the problem with the things that are being accumulated on, at underpasses. Thank you. Thank you. As we send people to that page, it might be real good to put the, add the functionality to that page so that people in the community who want to make suggestions have a place to be able to do that. Right now, it's a static page in that regard. Mayor, we but, actually do have uh, an email address where we are soliciting okay. and welcoming, welcoming input from the community. It's homeless.input at austintexas.gov, and it is a staff mailbox, so we do welcome any and all feedback. Um, from our community members. It's good. Well, if you added to the page, and because and, and, I've just been having asked this question multiple times in the last 45 minutes, would you say that email address again more Absolutely. slowly? Absolutely. It's homeless.input at austintexas.gov. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to hear. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.